o'clock. It is Tuesday night. Do you know where your DJ's at? I know where I'm at. I'm here with you. Yes, it's the DJ round table side here. And round table time or rain table side or your stable side. Whatever way you want to look at it, you're here watching the show. And, of course, I have our normal smorgasbord of DJs here from all around the country. Uh, northeast, south, and west is pretty much pretty well covered here. Uh, we got a lot of guys from over the place. And as always, it's grateful to have people here. DJ Billy's is back in the house again. Don't forget, I put a link last time. I'm going to put a link again this time for his podcast. He is, uh, what, the 192 podcast, correct, sir? Yes, it is. There you go. Yep. So make sure you go to yep. his podcast. A lot of great people on there to listen to, other DJs, and a lot of great stuff on there, as well as everyone here has a YouTube channel. So if you are watching this on Twitch, make sure you follow here on Twitch. If you're watching this a recap on YouTube, make sure that you like, follow, subscribe. Everyone here because they put a lot of great content out, especially with a lot of great information. And I want to start off with a thank you from DJ Aga. He uh, said, uh, uh, Galloway Girl is a unheard of banger. I'm definitely going to play this at my next non-formal event. I'm going to try it uh, toward the end of dinner to get folks flow, uh, drinks flowing a bit before open the dance floor. So that is uh, thanks to the round table. Uh, DJ Chris Fox, all you out in California out there. Uh, he said, uh, Ikea has great DJ furniture. So you can do some DIY stuff with some furniture there. And we talked about uh, furniture last time. Uh, I, you know, I've seen some guys on YouTube that have bought uh, tables and stuff from Ikea and cut out for the controller and put their controller in there and done some LED lighting and put it on to, uh, so to a, um, either legs or on some kind of a, a platform of some kind. So there's always great stuff to do and some great DIY stuff there from Ikea. And then um, we have a question for the table in a little bit. But uh, first thing first, I want to talk about um, an unfortunate passing in the DJ world. Uh, we've had the passing of the man who brought us the cha-cha slide. And, you know, it is... Sad that cancer uh, unfortunately took his life. Uh, he's a guy from here from Chicago that uh, started this song to get everyone at dance floor moving and grooving and going across the dance floor. I know I've used it many, many, many times. I have my copies from uh, promo only, and uh, people do request that song. And I, I wanted to go to the round table and say, uh, um, I'm going to start with DJ Salsa's Matt. Um, we're talking a little prior to the show. Uh, I know you don't use it too heavily. I don't think any of us here use it all the time. But when you use it, do you usually get a mm. uh, great response? And, you know, you feel it's a a good song that people can come out and dance to and kind of get a little groove going? Uh, I mean, sure. I mean, it, people are going to dance to it no matter what because it's a coordinated dance. People love that stuff. But I don't rely on it. Uh, like, I don't. I try not to play it if at all possible. If I've got a completely dead dance floor and nobody's dancing and I've tried everything, then maybe I'll throw it on as a last resort. But unless it's requested, I steer clear of that song just because it's 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 so corny. It's it's almost to the point of chicken dance. Like cha cha now, y'all. Like it's just it's such a I don't know. It's it's yeah, it'll get everybody dancing, but is it a banger? Definitely not. Right? There's and it's at one twenty eight. There's a thousand other songs we play that are 128 they're way better but uh i don't know i think it'll get a heavier role heavier play now that he passed away unfortunately so it's not a bad thing it's just not a i don't know i i get my weddings are very two-sided you either get people that love line dances or hate them so i if they love them and they want them great i'll play them if it's not on their do not play list i'll try not to play it um if it's not on the request list but i don't fall back on it so, you know, it's one of the now things that, was, like I said before, you know, I, again, I've used it, uh, you know, many times. And again, it's one of the things that uh, not every, every wedding works, it works well with. Not every wedding, you know, people want it. 
Uh, I've had weddings. People say no organized dance songs whatsoever. And you so, you know, no cha-cha slide, no cute shuffle, no uh, nothing like that. They, they don't even want Cotton Eye Joe or anything, anything even remotely close to an organized dance song. So it's one of the things you need to know what your clients want. You need to execute what your client's wishes are. But for the most part, again, it's one of the things that when I see the request sheet on the request sheet, it, it, there's a lot of times down there saying, hey, you know, uh, Cupid Shuffle, Electric Slide, cha cha Slide, uh, Wobble, you know, Cotton Eye Joe, uh, so forth, so on. So I want to go to one of my DJs down in the South, Jeff Johnson. I know you were ha out last week. Uh, welcome back, sir. And hopefully, uh, I, I think it was out for soccer for your child, and hopefully they won. Am I correct? Am I remember my memory correct? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it wasn't a game. It was just a uh, um, practice. Okay. Well, hopefully he enjoyed himself <laughs> and uh, got, got a chance oh, to go yeah. out there and enjoy himself. That's the important part. And, you know, it, one of the things you guys out there watching, you know, we, we all have families. We all have stuff going on. So if the DJ's not here one week, you know, again, it's no big deal. They will be back here. They're always welcome here. So uh, on your on your uh, events that you do, I know you do some school dances. Uh, you do quite a few school dances uh, as well as weddings and other events. When you use uh, those dance songs, organized dance songs, let's say like Cha Cha Slide, uh, how often do you use it? Do you is it something you always uh, go to, or is it heavily requested, or is it something that you use very seldom? Um, almost every time, yeah, it's requested. Uh, you know, it's uh, uh, for young people, especially middle school, high school. You know, it's uh, even college age. You know, it's a huge hit. I mean, they uh, they know it, they like it. As soon as they hear those first. Uh, those first beats, man, a lot of them just come running to the floor. It's, uh, you know, it, it, an older crowd at a wedding or um, or like an event I've got coming up, uh, reunion, you're not going to get that many people on the dance floor with it. Um, so I would play it sparingly at those occasions. But yeah, school dances, it's huge. Okay. So we have, uh, again, different areas of the country, different things, different ideas. So my next, I'm going to go to my next Southern DJ is DJ Cool Thing Hunter. Uh, what about you? Uh, you, I know uh, you and I kind of similar thought on on uh, Casper with DJ, Sli you know, the Chacha Slide and uh, you know, Cupid Shuffle and all the other slides. I, I don't mind DJing them. I don't mind using them. And again, we try and do what the crowd wants. But do you use it quite a bit, or do you use it? Someone you use? It oh yeah, I use I use it. I, yeah, I use it all the time. At every single gig, I had to play at least once. And then I would go into like the Cupid Shuffle. I'll bring, I'll try to do like more line dances to get people on, to keep people on the dance floor and keep them dancing. Going back to about that, you tire them out real quick. <laughs> no, they, the they, they just keep going, the you know, just, they just keep going to the left, to the left, to the <laughs> left, to the left, or right, to the right, to the right. Yeah, and, oh, wait, well, I do yeah, shuffle I do, now. <laughs> I, do, I do a lot of like parties and school events, church events, company events. I do stuff like that. I haven't done a wedding in a couple of years. So, yeah, I, I do play it all the time at every single gig. But you can always tell a bad DJ, not a bad DJ, but uh, I always cringe when I see gig logs and all they're showing is line dances. Uh, yeah, again, some some DJs want to do every single line dance out there. You know, my philosophy is do a few of them. See, you know, again, just here and there, just to make those people happy. Sometimes some weddings it, it, you you got to use but more than others, or sometimes you got to use less all boils down to what is going on. I think, I think we lost DJ Especially Billy. I know he said he had to go to work, so he may have left the, the call. I was going to talk to him next, but <laughs> okay. Um, but I know it's always different. So I'm going to go to uh, my other DJ friend, my brother from the East out there in beautiful Ohio, uh, Mr. Dwayne Dixon. I know you, uh, I know you probably have played the Q, uh, keep it shuffle, cha-cha slide, electric slide, and all the slides, you know, all the time, uh, at least once or twice, I would probably say. Uh, what do you feel? How do you feel about them? And uh, you know, again, uh, do you use them? Do you uh, do you enjoy playing them, or do you look for requests, or what do you do with them? I think you're, you're muted. muted. Yeah, you're muted. 
<laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> All right, Dwayne, I'm going to come back. No, I don't hear you. I'm going to come back to you one second, let you work on that for a second. So I'm going to go to my other Ohio DJ, DJ Billy, which is actually, he's not too far from uh, from uh, Dwayne there. Uh, for Cubit Shovel, Cha Cha Slide, those kind of organized dance songs. Uh, what do you uh, what do you feel on them? Yep, it's not. I hear. It. Um. All right. <laughs> so I will. What I what I would say is um, is that I guess it just kind of goes back to getting choppy. If it's hanging out. Quite if it's like the environment for it, I would say, um, because I guess if it's not rusted, it's kind of it's of a uh, last. All right, DJ Billy, you're kind of breaking up a little bit. Well, I'm gonna come back to you. I'll give you a second or two. Maybe you're in a bad area. Maybe you move out. I heard, I heard a little bit of it. Didn't hear everything. I'll give you a minute, a minute or so. Uh, Dwayne, I know you got your mic working out. I heard you thumping, and actually, you made my uh, dog bark. So, so. Right. <laughs> <laughs> she heard the thumping. She's like, "Oh my god, someone's at the front door!" <laughs> oh. <laughs> but I, I try to avoid it, and if I use it, I try not to do it too early. But here, especially with a lot of reunions, birthday parties, church events, they they do nothing but smooth jazz for um dinner, and you know whatnot. And then they want to do line dances. So I have to hit all the line dances. And if I'm lucky, I can get some people that go to line dance classes so I can break away from the wobble and all that. I can go back to the throwbacks like Detroit Shuffle, um, Percolator, and some of the R&B line dances, so line dances. But yeah, heard the line that. dance thing is still big here. I've never oh, heard yeah. any of those. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, you got I always love when someone breaks out in the middle of the line dance or going the wrong way, or they decide to do something totally different than what they're telling. You know, you hear, you know, to the left, to the left, to the left, to the right, to the right, and they're over there doing, uh, you know, they're doing the sprinkler, doing this and stuff like that, going out there, or they're doing like they're shopping or something like that. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it, it's it's just funny how that happens that you turn around and look at that and you see that and you're like, hey, uh, yeah, uh, you're doing the wrong thing. Or people just don't know what they're doing, especially like Macarena. That's always one people just like they're touching oh, head and giving each other high five. Yeah. Right? It's, like, it's it's amazing when you see people doing. They're always doing stuff, and uh, I just got a little bit of a message here from uh, DJ Bradley. He said he'll be back in one second. Yeah, he should be coming right back right now. Uh, okay, DJ Bill, we're gonna go to you. I, you were breaking up a little bit. Go ahead, and <laughs> hopefully you're in a better area. Yeah, um, hopefully it's good now. Um, oh, yeah, now you're but clear. Anyway, going back to, yeah, going back to what I said was that um, it's kind of, if it's requested, if it's a last resort, if it's the environment, then that's what I would say is suitable for it. But I would say kind of if it's not requested, if it's time to do it, then I would just say to, to just try and avoid it. Um but yeah, just the environments like kind of that some environments I'm in, I don't really like to use it unless it's like, OK, it's not none of what else I'm doing is working. Um, but yeah, usually it's it's not it's usually a last resort for me unless it's requested. OK. All right. So you you kind of stay away from it unless it's a requested song. Okay. Uh, okay. We do have a question about subwoofers. I just need to find it really quickly. Uh... Hey, buddy. I will just uh, add one thought to that. Sure. You go know, ahead. As DJs, we hear we hear that song every week, and yeah, we get tired of it. Um, but you gotta you gotta play for the the people. Those people aren't at uh, events every week. Uh, most of them aren't at least uh, they may, it may have been months since they've heard that song or years, uh, yeah. but they know it. Yeah. So, so it's just like a DJ on the radio, you know, you play the same stuff every day. You just got to play it. You know, you may not like it, but uh, you know, it, it's, that's what you're there for. So, uh, so you have to take it with a little grain of salt and, yeah. uh, you know, play it. Exactly. Just like you and like you and me, we do almost like the exact same types of gigs. We got to play it. It's tradition. 
mostly at school dances and birthday parties and stuff like that. You got to play as tradition. See, I'm on the exact opposite polar field of that. Unless it's on a must playlist for me or it's a request at a wedding and I'm allowed to play it, I'll play it. But the only group dance I even really like to play and is Wobble. And I'll give you, uh, you know, to the first back it up, back it up, where the break is, and that's all you're getting out of it. And when it comes to, like, all the other ones, if you put them on your must playlist, yeah, I'll play it. I hate the stuff, but there's a place for it. But more often than not, because a lot of the couples that want me are booking me to do what I do at dance clubs and college clubs, I get a little bit more leeway of not having to play those. So, yeah, I mean, I get where, you know, on your spectrum of it, you don't get, you know, the same clientele or demographic I'm getting. And that's a big part of it. I mean, the wedding I did a few weeks ago where the bride and groom was closer to my age than my typical wedding didn't want any of it. And the wedding I did, what, Saturday was it? Yeah, Saturday wanted all of them. So it it varies from person to person by far. But yeah, it's, definitely... it's very true. It always varies from different event to event. There's no two weddings or events the same. That's That goes back to, you know, what I was saying before, it all boils down to what people want. We've all have weddings that people don't want organized dance songs. And it's like, you know, great. And if not, you know, it, again, it's not a crutch for me, but again, a lot of people like it. So, I see it on the request sheet. I'll throw it in. And like Jeff said, we've all heard it a hundred times, thousand times, million times. We could probably see it in our sleep. But those people coming in there, they're like, yeah, I haven't heard this in a while. I like this song because it gets grandma up and walking or running or gets aunt so-and-so or uncle so-and-so to do this. Or I get to do this, you know? So it's kind of like, yeah, again, you know, it's it, 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 like Matt said, it's kind of the, the cheese factor and use the air quotes there. But it's it's one of the things that you know people do do gravitate toward it. And again, you have to know your crowd and see what you're doing and watch what people are doing. If people are just standing around the wall, like not doing anything, no one's on the dance floor, you know, okay, you need to get out, you know. Yeah, especially now since he's gone, you know, it's a good tribute. Yeah. Again, I'm sure there'll be more requests than normal for it because it's you know, again, here in Chicago, it was on the local news because he was here and they have interviews with him talking to him before when he got diagnosed with cancer, his battle with cancer and so forth and so on. So it, it, it's one of the things that, you know, here, at least it's it's here uh, on the news. Um, so this is from DJ Aga, um, which he's a great, great person. Asked a lot of questions and thank you so much for asking the questions. And by the way, if you want a question answered, put it down below, you know, ask the question and we will answer the question. You know, it, if we can answer it, we'll answer it. But ask that question so we know exactly what you want to do, uh, what you want to hear. And uh, again, we'll give our opinions for stuff. So he needs some options. Uh, mix matching brand, uh, sub brands like a 18 inch EV and an 18 inch Mackie. Is there noticeable sound issues for by doing this? I know some guys going to sing uh, Icoa, blah, 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 but the Icoa oh, is not an oh. option. Uh, what is the overall option? Uh, the overall opinion your first mistake is an ev sub you shouldn't buy ev anything um none of it is worth the money it all sounds like garbage uh but that's besides the point their their etx is about as powerful as the mackie sub in my opinion their etx like you shouldn't ev ev tops are okay i wouldn't ever use them but um i mean you you can mix and match subs you shouldn't though because they're all bass sounds a little different so it's better to get two of the same than to mix and match. But I mean, I've run, I've run a, I've run my dual twenty ones and Icoas, and I mean, base is base. If you have enough of it, you're not going to notice one sub sounding different than the other. But you shouldn't, you shouldn't. If you have two single eighteens, you shouldn't mix and match. That's for sure. Especially if you're putting them on separate sides, it'll sound kind of weird. Well, not only that, the optics of it too, because they have a to different manufacturers, yeah, totally different looks, and it's kind of like yeah. you 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 see a car driving down the street, and one side of the vehicle is Ford, the other side is Chrysler, and you have a uh, a Chevy uh, you know bow tie on the uh, grill. You know, you'd be like, 
what is that? It was, it was called EMC back in the day, but uh, <laughs> no one's driving around a, a vehicle like that right now. And that's that's one of the things that uh, you might want to look at and say, hey, you know, um, and DJ Billy had to leave for tonight already. Uh, so as I'm going across here, uh, I, I can't, quick, really quickly of the room um, and DJ Billy, I know you got had to leave, but as quickly across the room, I just want to see a show of hands. Who here has EV speakers or subs or anything from EV? So two DJs here who have EV. So okay, we're gonna. I know. I know Jeff. He's got LD systems. Uh, I know I have I LD, LD systems. <laughs> uh, I know uh, Matt's got LD and RCF. I have RCF as well. Uh, I had and- I had EKXs. They had an electrical problem. They would shut off randomly. I. Returned them. I ended up getting another one a couple years later. Same issue. So EV needs to fix their QA. That was my, after that, I was like, nope. Um, I have one of their lavalier mics. Their mics are great. Uh, I just, I can't trust their speakers. That's understandable. Uh, I know uh, Hunter doesn't have any subs right now, but maybe in the future, he I'll decides to get one. Sub. Not going to get one? Nope. Okay. I've never been sub, never. I'm going to stick with my two tops. That's it. No, that's fine. Again, you, you got to do what works for you, man. Okay. So of my uh, two EV guys, and I'll go to Jeff afterwards. Um, I'm going to go to uh, Brentley because he uses EV quite a bit for subs. And he ran I- EVs for tops for quite a while until he switched over to the Icoas. Uh, so I, I got a question for you. What do you feel about the question? Mix and matching speakers. Um, what, what do you think of that? I mean, uh, I was using Mackies before. My DJs for the company all use EVs. Um, and based on price and, you know, whatnot, my business partner's a bigger fan of EVs. But uh, when I got, you know, I went from Mackie to Icoa, and I'm kind of blown away at how much more I can pump out of them and how clean, you know, how clean it sounds. But mixing and matching stuff is something I've never actually done, so to speak, like, Every set of speakers I'm using is, is matched. So even my subs, even, you know, either pair of my, you know, my white sound towns that I refitted with us, uh, eminent speakers in them. Cause yeah, they didn't hold up the speakers and didn't hold up long enough in my opinion, but I don't like the aesthetic look of having this Mitch mixed matched equipment. So, I mean, beyond the look, like Matt was saying, your sound is gonna vary you know one reason i went with you know mackie subs over ev subs when i've got them is i use my business partners and i'm like they just don't hit hard enough on the initial punch they might you know they might have a little bit more of a throw but i want more of that punch and boom coming off my setup and that's why i went with the mackies uh i couldn't see putting a mackie and an ev across from each other it would be totally weird there wouldn't be a real good sound to it all, in my opinion. And with, you know, even with, uh, I would prefer at this point, I do want to get a pair of ICO, uh, LD system subs to go up my ICOAs, but I just don't have, you know, the finances to do so. I'm buying another deck as soon as I can. And y'all, <laughs> I'm feeling really stupid about it, but I, I just want to check it out. And mm-hmm. I may not keep it. Mm-hmm. Wait, wait, wait! What, what, what okay, deck? I'll keep it. What deck that is it? Rev Five is looking so sweet. Oh, <laughs> but the deck thing is something I'm really trying to find the right one for first before I go buy more speakers. But I'm not gonna. I, I don't think it's a really good aesthetic or sound. Not using paired off equipment. So, re- really quick on the Rev Five, How, are you are you seeing it? And what is the street price you're seeing out there right now with everyone? Eleven ninety nine, I think, is what I saw it for, and I'm. It's already, you know, they said it won't be available in September, so I'll put my order in now, get it in a month, and I don't necessarily. It's, it's the almost sound seems like the answer to every complaint I had about the uh, FLX series feeling like a toy, because the Rev series thus far, the Rev one, yeah, it's or the Mini Rev, whatever it is, yeah, it's a toy, it's a prat, you know, but the Rev seven was a substantial nice piece of equipment and looking at the five it looks like it might be close 
or they're going to do something bigger and release like the Rev 9, which is the monster of all of them. And I wouldn't be shocked if they did that too. But yeah, I wonder. Really, I really want to get my hands on a five right now. There you go. Well, if you want if you were one to DJ X, you probably could, you maybe could have saw, uh, seen one because I think because Pioneer is there at DJ X. I don't know what they have. Yep. I know uh, there's some DJs broadcasting from the floor out there, and uh, I think I would probably hope that Pioneer would have such a unit to show at least one. Um, but I don't know. I I, I, don't, I don't know uh, what they have out there. Um, all my friends who are out there right now, I have other than seeing pictures here and there, I have no idea because I haven't got a chance to really talk to anyone. So if you're at DJX this uh, week uh, out there in Atlantic City and uh, you see something, put down in the chat what you're seeing out there and hopefully, uh, you know, it's some uh, – it's some cool stuff. You know, I, again, I know the releases stuff. I know Nam is always the big one uh, out in California for uh, releasing things. So I want to go to my next uh, EV uh, DJ here, uh, Mr. Dixon. D Mr. Dixon, what do you uh, think about that for the subs running an 18 uh, EV and 18 Mackie? Or do you think Mackie is better than EV or EV is better than Mackie? Or is there another sub that you think it's really, really good? Um, I don't know about all of that. It's just I got what I can afford, and at the time I have mixed the subs before, and I think you really won't notice a difference if you have them everything together. If you have like one side, one brand, and you know the other side a different brand, you're going you're hear a difference. But if it's close together and you mix it well, you're not going to hear a difference. Okay, at least for what I used it for. Yeah, and again, you, you're the one that has done it. I have not done it, so I can't say one way or the other, and I don't want to say something I don't know because <laughs> I have nothing EV. Um, I'm I, I, I'm not a fan for EV. It's not that I don't like them. i just not a fan for them. It's not a brand I go to. Uh, you know, Everybody's got their favorite stuff. It's like, what kind of car do you like to drive? Well, I like to drive Toyotas, or I like to drive Fords, or I like to drive Chevys. Everybody's got their favorite thing. So if you're an EV fan, Hey, no problem. I, I think EV has a good speaker. I just don't think it's for me. Uh, you know, the, the, I know a lot of people yeah, talk about a lot of EV yeah. products. They love it. Hey, God bless. Yeah, I was actually close to buying the EV ZLX 12 piece back at Christmas a few years ago before I bought my JBLs. And I went with the JBLs because they were in my price range. Yeah, and again, that could, be a, that, that could be a big factor there. Uh, Mr. Johnson, you and I, uh, sir, we 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 run mostly running arrays. I know Dwayne does run the Harbinger arrays, and then Matt has what he calls the big boy arrays with the uh, the top RCF and the twenty two inch uh, subs down below. But you and I, uh, <laughs> you and I might do a little more manageable arrays. The uh, you have LD for your primaries. I I, I use LD a lot of my weddings, uh, the smaller weddings. I just actually used this past weekend. Uh, the Maui Fives, at, you know, again, 85 people, more than enough hit. I never had anybody say, hey, it's too quiet, too quiet or anything that. Uh, what do you think about mixing and matching subs, any brand? You know, doesn't matter if it's a brand you know or a brand that you've seen or played with before. I know you have different systems, so. Yeah, you know, technically you shouldn't, um, but phonically, <laughs> audio, audibly, uh the crowd will not notice much of a difference uh, when you're playing it at loud volumes. Uh, honestly, uh, yeah, a technophile will probably notice um, and call you out on that. But, um, but you know, it, it is what it is. We all are kind of victims of what we can afford when we can afford it. You know, I bought my tops, um, my Maui's, I mean, I'm sorry, my, um, my Mackies, I got two Mackie tops, the, uh, uh, the SRM uh, V-Class, uh, 15 inch. And those are great. They get very, you know, loud volume, uh, loud, uh, yeah, good enough to carry a large venue. Um, so when I could afford those, I bought those and I got rid of my previous speakers. Um, I had one 15 inch, uh, what was it? A Behringer you know, powered sub. That's what I could afford when I first started, you know, getting into, uh, getting back into DJing. Uh, so I bought a second one of those. So I had two of them. Um, 
but then I could afford, you know, a better, I got an 18 inch Mackie. So I use the Mackie. So, so I've got kind of a Frankenstein system and it depends on what I'm DJing as to what I take out um, for a big venue, a uh, big event, like a, um, if I'm doing, um, you know, a prom or a homecoming dance, you know, I'll take my big tops, uh, I'll take my 18 inch sub and I'll take those two 15 inch subs as well. And I'll put them in the middle. Okay. I'm firing them all from right in front of the booth. Uh, I'm not separating them. Uh, if you separate them in any way, shape or form, you're going to hear a difference. So, but if you get them all together, uh, you're going to get that boom, you're going to get that bass. And yeah, it may be a little bit muddy because they're different sizes. I've got two 15s. I've got one 18. You're going to get some phasing issues. Um, you know, it, it is what it is, but the kids, you know, or the, the, the event goers, they're going to hear a lot of bass and it's going to rumble and it's going to shake some glass and that's what they want. And so it really doesn't matter. It's what you can afford, what you can bring with you. Um, you know, there, I know a lot of DJs who don't own subs, but either rent or borrow them. And sometimes they Frankenstein many subs together. I've seen events where there are six subs, maybe eight, and uh, uh, sometimes two or four different kinds of subs. Doesn't matter. You know, you're just throwing some uh, an enormous amount of low frequency out onto the dance floor. But the main thing I would say is keep them centered if you're going to do that. There's nothing wrong with having an EV and a Mackie. Put them in the center in front of your booth. Do not separate them under your uh, your mains. That's when they're going to show that, you know, you may hear a difference there, especially at volume levels. You know, different different uh, subs will pump out different volume levels at different frequencies. It's just how they're made. And uh, you won't notice that if you, if you gang them together and, uh, and couple them right in front of your uh, booth. So, yeah, it, it, technically, no. But if your finances say otherwise, do it. You know, nobody's going to notice the difference. One other thing also is the uh, crossover. If you're going from your mains into the sub and sub into the speakers, each crossover, each speaker could be a little different. So your highs and your mids could be different on your two-way cabinet too. So you may have the same speaker on each side, but the crossovers in the subwoofer may jostle that around a little bit. And one side may sound a little different on the other side. So what Jeff has given, he's given great information and putting the subs down below. And one other thing also, uh, I know he hasn't been out for a while because of work and everything like that, uh, but Braylon, uh, he also does the same thing. I used to do when I ran subs is that he did booth out into the subs directly. So that the tops were directly from your top source, your XLRs out. And then Booth did, you know, quarter inch to either quarter inch or quarter inch XLR into there. That way he can control the base the way it is. But that's another way if you you can't separate, you know, the XLR, run your booth into the subs. And this way your booth out, you can, so during dinner or cocktail, you can turn your subs off. But when the dance floor opens, you can turn it up and then hit that. So it gives you another I'm option sure as well for flexibility. Crossover helps that? with that too. What? So if you have a crossover. That works great. Like, but I, also, a, I just have a, uh, it's a hundred dollar Rockville crossover and it sounds phenomenal. It lets you control each channel independently. So you can send however much to the sub you want to send. And it gives you like a lot more gain control too. So, I mean, my output on my external mixer might be at zero uh, or, you know, a couple notches up hitting the oranges, but I can always scale that back and just bump up my mass, my, my gains on each channel on the crossover and have way more headroom. There you if go. Your speakers can handle. So I, I noticed both Matt and a Hunter are both having snacks here. So I saw I Matt have an apple, and Hunter's you having ice cream. With Matt, the, um, you got pretty share for the rest um, of the crowd here. Uh, with, uh, yeah, with the magic shell hot fudge. Oh, uh, uh, see, man, so good. You make a fat, you make a fat man hungry. You know you don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, seriously, uh, you know it's 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 one of the things that with subs and stuff like that and equipment. I, I I'm I'm very much you know again just like Jeff said. I, you heard a few other people say you kind of want to keep the same stuff together, but if you can't because of financial reasons or you know you, whatever the reason is, oh, yeah. put them together. Let them work, you know, this way, if there's any kind of problem with phasing a little bit, 
maybe one may cancel one out for the problem a little bit and eight people won't notice it. Um, you may have that one audio file that comes in there and says, oh, I hear that, you know, you're one octave higher on this sub than that sub. Great, you know, <laughs> but yeah, 95% of the people in the room will never know they just hear the bass and feel the bass and they they feel that, that groove going on. So I think that, you know, that, that kind of answers, but it kind of gives you options as well uh, for your subwoofer. And I hope that helps you out, uh, especially in any endeavor you do. Uh, one thing I also want to ask you guys, um, and again, before I know that I run uh, line arrays, Jeff runs uh, line arrays, uh, Dwayne has some line arrays. Uh, Matt also runs line arrays, run, line arrays, but runs the separate top and the bottom and is more of the concert level sound system more uh, his top is really designed to be flown uh and the subs there uh so the, the question goes to other, everyone else here who especially people who run the line away line arrays if i could talk right uh have you ever run a subwoofer with your line arrays and i, I have i have not because i've not seen a need for it because the way they hit but uh, Dwayne, have you ever run a subwoofer with your line arrays? Yep, for my school dances, I do. Okay, I, add, I like to add a bass that punch from okay. the middle, as opposed to just having it come from the side. So it adds another. It adds, it makes it fuller to me. Okay, more full or rounder sound, a little more uh, punch, a little more kick to it. Yep, because the harbingers don't really. It's bassy, but you don't get that that pounding bass. Oh no, yeah. So it's, when I uh, added the um, is it eight inch or a ten inch woofer in the bottom? Um, I want to say eight. Okay, I'm believing. So it's similar to the Maui Five's eight inch woofer. Again, it's, it gets in a yeah. little bass, but it's not going to you know knock your socks off. It's not going to be like one match twenty ones, which are going to make you deaf. Yeah. But uh, you 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 feel the bass all the way across the room versus just within a few feet of the, of the, of the, of the unit, which is, you know, again, depending on what you're doing, if you're doing a school dance like that, you know, you're having hundreds of kids. Yes. You're going to need a little more hit. And I know Jeff over there, have... he, he runs the 28, the Maui 28. So he, I know you've run a subwoofer with those before, correct, sir? Yeah. It depends on the setup. If I'm doing a small wedding or a, uh, you know, barn wedding, uh, I won't take a sub. Uh, the, the two, the two uh, dual eights in the uh, Maui twenty eights, uh, they're good. They're enough for a you know, small dance floor in a, in a medium small room. Uh, when I get to a medium room with a lot of people or a bigger room, I'll add the bass. If I've got a, a, an enormous room, I step up to the uh, uh, to the Mackie tops, and uh, and then if it's a, a giant room with kids, then I'll add the extra subs. So I got to step up. More speakers or different speakers, which with uh, you know more people, but yeah, well, I, I do. Yeah, but yeah, that my next event coming up is uh, just it's a fiftieth, fiftieth or fortieth, fortieth year reunion, I believe. Fortieth, forty year reunion. They're not going to be hitting hard, you know. Uh, so I'm they not going to take a sub. They might. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I've done enough of these. Uh, they they talk. They love to talk. You know, they'll dance a little bit, but you know, dance floor is maybe fifteen people. And that's what going back, knowing your crowd, knowing what you're getting into is a key thing. Right equipment, yeah. right time, right deal versus just bringing everything in all the yep. time. And it's, it's also working smarter, not harder, because if you don't need subwoofers, you don't need extra tops, you don't need all this extra stuff. Why bring it? If you get If it's on your vehicle or in your trailer or, you know, you have it with you, okay, you may need it, may not, but. Wait a second, and we all always need well, subwoofers. Me what is that? Not me. I never. I have. I, said, I never have a need for subs. Never. I said you, you always need subwoofers. I've always had one there. I mean, unless you're running a significantly powerful 15 inch top, like a the RCF 945s, like or a dual 15 top, like you need that. I mean, that's why they've made these column arrays because people were too cheap to get a subwoofer and well now it's part of the system so you're gonna have it uh but before so many djs are like no nah, i don't need a sub like two speakers are fine they just don't care about sound quality so the companies were like all right well you guys are gonna do that we'll just make it so that you have to get the subwoofer because it's what powers the top and i think that's where like when ev came out with their evolves that's really what sold it was like 
yeah, it's nice looking, but it's a all in system. So buy it and it'll be, be balanced. But well, I, I have the, I've only ever, well, I have, well, I have the JBL Eon 612s and they are powered speakers and they can pack a punch. I'm sure they're mm-hmm. punchy, but the, yeah, that's the thing. Is, but like with, with the subwoofer gives you that low end, like that super low end. And I don't need that low you end. You just can't. I don't, maybe not for you. I don't have the space for it. How many times do I have to say it? I don't have the space for a subwoofer. That's fine. And again, you, that's again, fine. You, you'll get space. I didn't have it. Hunter, and again, if you don't have the space, you have a little smaller gig. You have, you know, 50, 60, 80 people. Matt has 300 people. It, it's two totally different gigs. And I, I, when, when I ran tops, when I ran normal two way tops, you know, JBL, I ran JBL, PRX, SRX. And I have also uh, the Eons. When I ran them, I didn't run subs all the time. It's when it was an option for people they wanted. They said, no, they don't want it. The 15 inch woofer gives some decent bass. Is it as low grunt as a subwoofer? No. But again, it's all about what does your client want? Does it fit your need? Do I feel every single gig needs a subwoofer? No. I, I a lot of times there's there's certain gigs like what Jeff is doing down there for his uh uh, his reunion. Do they need to have you know fifteen inch subs? No, eighteen inch subs. No. Again, it wouldn't work for that because people would complain about it. Again, it's knowing your business. And cool thing, you do a, you do a good amount of little outdoor gigs or little pop up gigs, car shows. You know, you're you're on the beach. You do some outdoor weddings, or you do a wedding in a small room. You don't need a subwoofer. You got some good twelves. You got some good bass coming out. It sounds great. Your your customers never complain about it. So. Again, different ways of doing things. And Matt, I know Matt loves subwoofers. DJ Brentley, I know he uses subwoofers quite a bit. And it's it's you know again, it's different different way of doing things. Now, does does you mean that you use it for everything? It's up to them. They're 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 they they, they want to look at what they want to do, and if it's what they feel works for them, not a problem. Is it right or wrong? It's their opinion. It's like anything else. Every has an opinion. <laughs> But, you know, again, Matt has a point that a subwoofer does add the extra hit of bass and the extra low end grunt. Do you always need that? I don't feel you do. If Matt wants to pull a subwoofer for every single gig he does, then that's up to him. He's he's one moving it, not me. And in oh. Hunter, you're not moving it either. He's moving it. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'll tell you this. You don't worry about comb filtering or a dead zone when you have two dual 21s next to your facade. Uh, That's yeah, the only that, way and really you know, work. grandma, you just scrape grandma against off the wall because you know she's thrown yeah, against yeah. the wall from all the bass noise. <laughs> once we get, once we get my when my when the white uh, dual eighteens come in, I'm gonna start using those at most of my weddings, uh, at least the ones with a nice facade, because that that's really the problem is the dragon facade because it's wood and plexiglass, it acts as just a buffer. So even if I have two eighteens right next to them on, on either side like the bass just gets trapped and it just messes with the way that the sound pushes. So I really don't have any other option than putting a big subwoofer either right in front, which I can't put a black one in front. So I can do a dual 18 and white in front, or I can just put a pair of 18s on either side and, and, you know, make it look nice. So that's, so... that's, that's really for usability. And, and I like, I like my clients having that full range, amazing sound on the dance floor rather than, you know, because we, we play a lot of dance music and bass heavy stuff. And yeah, that's one of the things is when I show people my my stuff, I'm like, look, you know, you're getting this setup versus a DJ that's just coming with a, the banquet table and two speakers and a little blinky bar. Uh, so that's hey, kinda... there's nothing wrong with Spencer's light. So the light has to get a certain temperature, <laughs> heat up inside. And then once it heats the inside up, it turns to start spinning that inside around and around and around. Or they have a loud lamp next to it. Hey, wait, wait, when's the dance light on? It's on right now. Wait till the lava starts flowing. You start really start seeing that color come out. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's just like, I, I get it. I get it if you like, on the bad DJ setups group, I get it if this was five, six, seven years ago when there wasn't every single DJ on YouTube and Instagram to show you what a nice setup looks like and people didn't have a clue and we had to figure it out back then. Now... You could just look at any DJ and be like, oh, yeah, I like that look, and I'm going to go for it. And people will tell you, like, it looks nice or it looks crappy. Like, back then, we didn't have that feedback. So I didn't, I mean, I'm probably guilty of bad-looking setups where my cables weren't perfectly taped and things weren't even. And uh, but well, I, that's, that's I how we grow. Yeah. That, that's I how we grow. You know, uh, you know, Hunter, 
he, you know, he got, you know, Velcro ties. He got all this other stuff because people are like, hey, dude, you know, your cables are showing. And what he do? He grew. And we all do. We all look at stuff. We're not, we look at stuff with different eyes a little bit. How can we better improve ourselves? And again, Hunter, from the time he started to now, it's like night and day. He grew. Just like I'm sure Jeff has done. I'm sure like Dwayne's done. Like Brentley does. I have. You have. We all have grown. And that's the great thing about that is that getting the, the negative as well as the positive feedback. There you go. Look at the DJ booth. Now. That's the uh, Rockville, that's the Rockville Rock booth. Yeah, and that that looks nice, and it's very similar to the booth that Jeff and I have. So we put a, a lot. It, it depends. Sometimes I put a TV on, sometimes I don't. Um, going back to the question, the furniture question, Matt, do you ever think yourself having one of those booths, kind of like a? You don't have to, you know, uh, say a Bun booth or a Max booth, but something similar to that. If not that, would you think of something like that? Oh, then your so subwoofer in front of that. No, um, because I don't, I can't stand on cables. Um, I can't have cables going under my feet or anywhere near where I'm standing. Uh, I don't have the time or the patience to make my wires look nice, uh, route them through like the center, however it's done. So what I would consider is something like what DJ Lowstack or, or, uh, Travis has where it's like just a TV and it's pretty much like a table with some rack mounts in the bottom. Well, that's that what, I would that's probably what, That's consider. what Brentley has. Brentley has one of those toad yeah, uh, booths. I, I, that's the other thing is I need at least five feet of table surface. So it'd have to be pretty significantly sized. And then Six, a TV you got a 65, right? Five. Right, Brentley? No, I've got the 42 and I'm going to get the 56 in black. And that's where I'm stopping. Yeah. So I. Toad. But I, I contacted my photo booth frame supplier. I don't know if you saw in some of the groups, like, think of like a photo booth backdrop, but as a DJ facade type thing where it just snaps together. Um, and, uh, you know, they were charging like three or $400 for it. And I just hit up my girl and said, can you make this? And she's like, yeah, it's 63 bucks for the frame and 40 bucks for the cover. So, um, and then you could change whatever cover you want. So I may look into that because um, I, I like the facade look, but... I think just the the plain white gets a little boring sometimes. You want to spice it up a little bit, so I may look into that. It's something to put in front, but I just I, I don't. I would I'd pay somebody to build a booth for me, but like I said, I'd want my dream one would be five or six, probably six feet wide, with an LED screen built into the front. Uh, that's what I'd, I'd I'd go for. I'd drop some money on that if I could, but yeah. Well, maybe you should bug. But then the I, know, I know Travis built his. And he did a heck yeah, of a job. Yeah, the other job. problem, though, is that you have well, to, I, uh, in that sense, then you can't run a sub underneath in the middle, which is what I do a lot of times, two speakers <laughs> inside the facade and a sub in the middle uh, underneath the table. So with that, you have to run two subs, two speakers every time. And then that's more gear I have to take, and I'd have to take a trailer to every single gig. So, Well, what you need is someone to make, a, make a, a, you know, a portable roller, you know, wheel base, you know, uh, mm -hmm. DJ booth, that the sub is in there, it's built around there, and it has vent holes and ports to come out underneath the LCD panel. So it's coming across the floor, hitting you, come out from the side, hitting you. And, you know, it, the base is there, but it's just kind of like rerouted around the LCD panel in the front. That would be kind of a interesting build if someone can build something like that or figure out, hey, I could put two subs you're facing down and or f facing some way to port the base underneath around and over the uh, LCD screen. So it hits you, but uh, doesn't affect the LCD screen or feel like you're blocking it. So maybe someone come up with that, you know, Hey, we got an idea here. Who wants to patent it? <laughs> uh, Jeff, I a question for you on going back to the uh, equipment stuff. And again, I know you had the same table I have, and sometimes you put a TV on, sometimes you don't put a TV on like I do. Uh, I think most of the time you run a TV, but when you run the booth and stuff like that, have you ever put a subwoofer behind underneath the booth? No, never behind. Um, I don't like it that close to me. Um, that can really damage your hearing if it's right under you. Um, if you get behind it a little bit, uh, you're, you're going to be okay. Uh, I keep mine out in front. What I did on my booth is um, I lowered my attachments on my uh, display all the way to the bottom as far as it would go. So when I hook that on to the front of the display, the monitor, the display uh, is, is higher up. It's enough to give me clearance at the bottom for my 18, 
um, that, that can center that right in front. So that, that works uh, fine. If I don't take the, um, uh, the 18 inch sub, I can lower that just by unscrewing those two attachments and popping them in. It takes about two minutes. Uh, but I kind of like it having, having it higher. I, since I've moved the, the display up as high as it will possibly go, um, you can see it a little bit better from across the room. Uh, people can, you know, it's, you don't, it's not hidden by the a row of people. It's, it's a little higher up. So, um, but I, yeah, I, I center my sub in front, um, you know, for, for big dances. If I'm taking three subs, they're centered up front. Um, so yeah, always have room. Uh, and, and a lot of times I'm up on a, uh, you know, a platform, 12 inch, a 16 inch platform. And that, in, in that case, I'll put the subs on the actual floor and not on the platform. And I will move my display all the way up to the front of that platform. And, uh, so the subs are basically right below it. And that's what I've done for school dances where I'm on a platform. And, you know, it's, it's one of the things where I'm running a booth leg and I, I run it on certain events, certain weddings. And I like how Matt has, uh, he's talking to a manufacturer. I, I, I take one of the manufacturers in, uh, or, you know, in China that will build a uh, kind of a facade that's very easy to put together. You can put it up very quickly. Uh, the one thing I always notice, and there's been a few videos on YouTube, I'm not mentioning uh, other DJs' names because it's it's kind of crazy that people fell into facades or they grab whole facades and they tumble on them. That, that's my biggest fear for with a facade. I know a lot of guys run facades or they have the bun booth where they're out front and they have a facade behind them because they have their gear on a table behind for sound and stuff like that. Um the, the the table up front, I think it, it, it's it's pretty good. But I think you know DJ Brentley with his uh, booth, I think that is a uh, a nice way to go too. But I would rather have instead of having a television, <sighs> have the LCD panels, uh, the you know, and have that LED the LED panels that are now becoming more and more prevalent and becoming more and more clear. Um, I saw some video of some new LED panels just came out not too long ago on on, the, on YouTube, um, and they look probably equal to 1080 uh, for video. It looked really really good, and it, it, it's getting up there. The technology keeps advancing, and maybe one day you'll have you know L LED panels that are in the 4K range, and we'll have that clarity that you would rival a, a TV. So. Uh, I'd love to see something like that. But so Dwayne on you, as far as what you do, I know we talked a little bit about furniture before <coughs> and stuff. Uh, but when you do stuff, uh, how, you know, what, would, what do you do for a booth? Would you rather have like a, you know, a Danny Max booth or you rather have a, uh, a booth kind of like, you know, the Rockville booth, like a cool thing has, or like Jeff and I have the, uh, what, what kind of booth do you like to have if you use a booth or do you rather have a facade in front of you, just a table? No, I I got the Rockville um booth. Okay, I like so, that because it's, it's just it's easy for me to carry in, and then I can just plop in and do a couple of things, and it's all set and ready to go. The furniture look nice, but it's like I'm one person. I'm not a big guy, and that stuff is kind of looks heavy. Yeah, look at me. I'm weak. I <laughs> hey, I, I will I will tell you this: DJ Rachel, who has been on the show before, she does the Danny Max booth. She puts it together pretty quick. Now, not and don't take this the wrong way. She, she, she's, she's a, she's a strong girl, and she puts that together. But she's, you know, being a young lady, uh, she puts it together pretty quickly. It all boils down what you put in there. You just have a controller in there, and and that, and the the, the top part. It shouldn't be that crazy. Uh, if you're putting in controller and power supply and a Furman power conditioner and microphones and all this other gear in there. It weighs it down more and more. It's, it's like a coffin case. In my coffin case, I have my XZ. I have in there, I have, you know, a power strip in there for firm and power strip. I have, you know, a, I have a microphone in there uh, from uh, Sennheiser. So I have a few things in there, which adds a few pounds to it. Nothing really crazy. It's just the length of it so wide that, you know, my wife and I lift it up because it's easier for two of us to lift it and move it than versus one person. I take it out of the van, put it down in the cart, but, you know, put it onto a table, the two of us lift and put it onto the table. It's really quick. This way, no one gets hurt. We don't want no one, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want her to get hurt. So 
But I know that DJ Rachel, she uses one of those Danny and Max boots and she loves it. And she's, you know, she rocks it out pretty well. And I understand Matt's, uh, you know, problem with the cables going underneath your feet and stuff like that. I can see that be, you know, stepping on cables that could be uh, annoying. Plus also, again, you you don't want to, the cable will roll and roll your ankle or hurt yourself. So that's the last my, thing you my want My setup to is different every time. My setup is different every time. Sometimes I have a lighting and laser guy that I put at a separate table. Sometimes I run the lighting. Uh, sometimes I use a specific mic. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I need both receivers. Sometimes I use this mixer. Sometimes I use that. So I really just, a flat surface would, would work, but like a, a fancy pre-cut booth, I just, that's just not me. Plus, I don't like people seeing my legs. Uh, it's I have this weird thing. I don't, I don't like people seeing me, seeing me dancing back there and and seeing all that. Like I, I need somewhere to hide stuff. You know, I'm now, not gonna. Matt, I'm I not gonna this, bring. I, I, oh God, I have this look. Of I'm you. not gonna bring a facade too, just to hide more stuff behind <laughs> something else. I have to tear down and pick up. Like here's here's the pro tip for you all. If you get a subwoofer, the subwoofer bag is massive, and you could put all your other bags in the subwoofer bag. Then you just roll that out on your cart, throw it in your car, throw the cart in your car. You're done. You don't need a facade to put all your schmeckus, as they call it, uh, behind. So, uh, <laughs> well, yeah. well here, here's the thing that I got in my mind now. That's why I'm laughing. You're standing there DJing, and your legs are like a cartoon character's a blur underneath there, dancing back and forth, <laughs> going like this, back and forth. And you're just, you're just, your legs are dancing, and you're just standing there, doo -doo -doo -doo, DJing. Doo -doo -doo. I do, you know, I dance a lot when I DJ. I, I like to dance and get down and, and all that stuff. But again, but, people uh, seeing that, that, that could add extra energy and you having fun. And again, you jump up and down. I've seen your videos and I've seen some of the videos shot from the side of you. And don't take it the wrong way, Matt. People are people. You that energy is a, a very very a, a, effective, and it, it's going to come along and affect everyone there, and it's going to give energy to the crowd too. Right. So that whole entire thing, you know, when you're you're getting into, deep into the EDM and jump yeah. up and down, and I know uh, Bradley, I've seen some of the video of him getting stuff and getting crowds, you know, excited and jumping, and he gets into it too. We all do. We all get into it, and you know, bobbing our head, tw you know, twisting whatever we do. That gets people like Hunter has done it too. I've seen Hunter a few videos, him getting into stuff, people getting excited. It's infectious energy. People are looking at it and going, Hey, the DJ's having fun doing it. I can have fun too. It, it's kind of like, you know, even though we're not up front, we and we shouldn't be up front, we should be a focal point, but it becomes infectious because people see us doing it. They're like, Well, he's doing it. Well, I can do it, same thing, or she's doing it. I can do the same thing. So it is a not, not necessarily a bad thing. And there's tons of people on there who have those kind of booths and they, they enjoy themselves. So I would say that, you know, if someone sees your legs and you're dancing a little bit, so what? You know, have fun, enjoy yourself. You know, again, there's, there's, I'm sure there's tons of young ladies that looking and go, Hey, look at that good looking guy. He can dance. He's fun. Again, you're, you're still single. Us, all of us are over here are married or, uh, you know, we're married at one time, you know, and the thing is that, you know, it's it's one of the things that, um, you know, if you find that right uh, right girl, which you have for a long time, you are nothing to worry about. You, ha you have her and you find the right person. Hey, God bless and go on. Uh, but the thing is that, you know, it, it's, it's one of the things that the furniture question, I don't think it's really laid to rest, you know, and that's one of the questions that I'm sure we hit a lot, a lot more and seeing a lot more is what do you want to do? What do you want to do for furniture wise? And the subwoofer question, hopefully, again, to answer some more stuff on that one as well. Um, other than that, guys, I, I want to thank you guys all for here tonight, coming in, spending your Tuesday night with us, uh, and, you know, just spending here. I hope you guys all enjoy yourself. Brantley's already saying goodbye. He's out of here. He's like, deuces, I'm out of here, man. <laughs> he's He's got to go, he's gotta go, uh, go to a club and DJ or something like that, you know? Oh, well. I've, he's got got the, the kid, I've got the boss tonight. Oh, I, you always, always get the boss. Yep. Well, hey, hey, don't make her mad. I, I had I had the little boss here earlier today, so I was with her all day today. So I, I she's seven and a half. I'm sure she is uh, much more of a of a bigger boss because she's ten. So, and yep. you get the furry boss right. telling you to do things too. <laughs> yep. you're, you're, yeah. Speaking of so, kids, um, I yeah. Speaking of kids, I cannot wait until I until one of the kids from my class at church books me for any of their parties is gonna be awesome yeah it will be because again you're the best dj on the beach 
So again, I yeah. want to thank you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't done so already, cool thing is it has his channel up for gig logs. So make sure you follow his channel. Uh, Jeff Johnson has some great gig logs up there. Great information. He does break some stuff down. He always has some great ideas. Uh, make sure you check him out. Follow him on his social media. Dwayne, I know that school's starting up soon, and hopefully you'll be able to still spend Tuesdays here during school. I'd like to see that. If you can, it'd be great, sir. If you can't, I understand. But Dwayne's another great guy. If you want to see some great tutorials and great gig logs, DJ Brentley, even though he wears a cape sometimes, if the camera's just right, it's always uh, it's always great. But he has some great videos up there for Wisconsin. And Matt, uh, his amazing light shows, uh, his uh, DJ horn in the beginning, looking up, going, D, you know, beep, 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 you know. You always got to do that, his signature move. And, of course, DJ Billy, who, unfortunately, you know, he had to go to work. He's got to make his money. He's got his podcast and all the other DJs who uh, come on here. Don't forget to support them. Follow them all. They have some great stuff going on. Uh, ho hopefully, Braylon, if he can get a chance, he can uh, he can come in here sometime soon, too. I know he's been working a lot. He, his, he got a new job, new, new job title, not a new job job. And he's got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff cooking. Hopefully, we'll get him in here soon. Uh, DJ Adrian e, you finally showed up. We're we're shutting down. You got to watch the video on YouTube now, my friend. I, you missed it. Good seeing you. You're here, though. <laughs> Again, and thank you all for tuning in. Make sure you guys have a good night and make sure you're safe. Other than that, we'll see you guys next week. Peace out. <laughs> Woo! <laughs>